Hi, I'm Will Ruark and I'm the Trail and Stewardship Coordinator for the Catawba Lands Conservancy in the Carolina Thread Trail. Today we are at the Buffalo Creek Preserve in Cabarrus County in our Piedmont Savannah where we just conducted a prescribed burn. Um, a prescribed burn is a fire that we started on a specific date in a controlled manner. So I like to think of a prescribed burn just like a doctor would uh, prescribe you medicine. We looked at this area and we wanted to create a savanna, so we came up with a medicine to fix it, and that medicine was fire. Um, in many historical accounts, uh, the Native Americans used fire very successfully to create and maintain grasslands. What's the difference between a prescribed fire and a wildfire? A uh, prescribed fire is done purposefully and done in a controlled manner. Um, weather is taken into account, uh, numerous staff members are on site, and large fire lines are created to control it. A wildfire can start either by um, humans or it can start by a, a nature, like lightning strikes. Fire is a very natural part of our ecosystem. Um, up until about a hundred years ago, uh, we did suppress wildfire. So an area like this dry ridge, Piedmont Savannah, would probably approximate fire every two to three years. Fire removes the leaf litter and the different debris that's on the ground, which allows seeds that are in the historical seed bank to bloom and to blossom. Um, it also can help us remove pyrophobic plants uh, that should not be growing on dry ridge tops like uh, a beech tree and a beech tree likes to send its limbs super far out and shade out all the plants that are beneath it. Um, our hardwoods like our oaks and our hickories have a really thick bark that, um, that is adapted to fire. Those plants can be called pyrophytes. We also have numerous flowers that need that dense vegetation on the ground to be gone for them to get the sunlight they need to grow. Um, that's why this area is a perfect area for us to plant the Schwinnitz's sunflower. Uh, first, we look at the unit or the tract of land that we would like to burn. We create a fire line around it, and that fire line can be uh, something that's naturally occurring, like a creek or um, maybe a rocky area, or it could be something that's man-made, and that man-made structure might be a road, or for instance here, we use the Carolina Thread Trail, or it could be a, a fire line built by hand, and to do that, you take tools um, and a leaf blower, and you first blow those leaves, which are fuel for the fire, and then you use tools to dig down until you get to mineral earth, which is something that will not burn. have to look at the way that weather patterns are working. We need specific wind directions and wind speeds. Um, relative humidity has to be low enough, but not too low, um, to burn in a safe way. Um, temperature needs to be um, not too cold and also not too hot. Um, and then one of the most important things is we have to look at how the atmosphere will disperse smoke. So when we do a fire, we like to have a large staff on site to uh, help out. We have people that are creating the fire using a thing called a drip torch, and then we have uh, staff members that are going to be standing on those fire lines that we talked about, and they're watching for maybe how the fire is behaving, um, and then to, just to constantly communicate with uh, the team to make sure everything is going as planned. We would like to thank our grant sponsors for making this ongoing project a reality. 
the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Duke Energy, the Grasslands Initiative, and the North Carolina Botanical Gardens.